This is Brad Ory and Paul Gamer, uh, volunteers with the Delaware Highlands Conservancy, and we're here at the Ted, Dr. Ted Kerpus uh, Memorial Blind here, the viewing on uh, Mongap Falls Reservoir, and we're going to do a couple little short videos of, about a couple different things about the eagles here, and uh, first thing we're going to talk about is safety, um, and Paul can explain a little bit about uh, you know, up on the road and stuff like that, not to go up on the road. And then uh, we're just going to kind of wing this, so. Okay. We ask that people do not go across the road. First of all, it's very dangerous. Cars come down this, these, uh, this road at 50 miles an hour, and they've seen eagles. They don't, and it's very dangerous. Also, even though it's, uh, there may be a lot of activity, you're going to disturb the eagles. So please stay off the road. Come into the blind or stay in your car. Want to add anything? Yeah, it's just, um, and there's also a couple other areas that are uh, out of bounds. Uh, if you look down the end of the parking lot here, um, just beyond that snow pile there and under the bridge, that's also a restricted area. And we ask that you not go down there. And also be careful on the road walking in all directions. Um, you know, it, it, as Paul said, it really isn't safe when the cars come flying down here. Uh, we're here to look at eagles and other wildlife, and they're not. They're busy going someplace else. Sometimes they'll even beep the horn and spoof the birds and stuff like that. There's also ducks and whatever back there, too. So it's not just the eagles, but it mainly is the eagles. Because you don't want them to, uh, you don't want to disturb them, make them fly, especially in the winter, because they use up a lot of their energy. So uh, I guess the next thing we'll do is, uh, you know, the safety is pretty much uh, common sense. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll take a look into, uh, you know, some safety about the COVID-19 uh, requirements and stuff like that. And then we'll get into talking. And uh, on cue, here comes the bald eagle. It's like an immature. And we'll explain a little bit about the, the birds, uh, where they There's come from. Yeah. Oh, two of them. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, all right, we'll feed you the fish later, guys. No, we won't feed you. Uh, <laughs> but that one's almost an adult, it looks like. It has a white head and tail. And that one was an immature or a juvenile. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk next about the, the COVID-19 and inside the blind and stuff like that. Okay? I do the COVID-19. We're asking that when people come into the line that they please wear a face mask and if possible stay uh, six feet apart yeah and it's not it's not just for uh it's you have to be respectful of other people even if you don't feel that you should have to wear a face mask there are other people uh you have to take them into consideration because you don't know the situation if the people are uh you know if they're having a, uh, uh, their immune system has been compromised in any way so it's just a courtesy thing as well as it's also, um, you know, I'm pretty sure it's the, uh, the mandate here in New York State. I know it is in Pennsylvania where I live. So uh, we'll come on in and okay, the blind here is a pretty good sized blind. It was new uh, last year and it's really nice and there's plenty of room in here. But there are some times when uh, it gets pretty crowded in here between photographers and, uh, you know, groups that come in. And we just ask that we uh, social distance as best as we can. And also, uh, again, be respectful of the other people that are in here. And if you're not seeing what you need to see or want to see, then don't just hang out. You can leave. Uh, you can also stay in your car. Uh, that's one of the other options, too. It's uh, warmer. It's no warmer in here than it is out there, uh, contrary to popular belief. The only thing you're protected from in here is the rain and the snow, when it rains and snows. So, uh, yeah, again, the social distancing and, uh, you know, just, it's common sense. Why you have two great opportunities to see the bald eagles. Uh, it's very common to see bald eagles sitting on the pine trees directly across from us, flying over the ridges in front of us. And if there's ice on the water, you can spot bald eagles in the distance on the ice. 
behind us, we have a window that goes back to the reservoir. And it's a great place to see eagles uh, hanging out on the pine trees all along the back or flying over the sky, in the sky. We also have six numbers on the metal. That's a great way to, to locate an eagle because if you look at the numbers, it, it uh, corresponds with different trees. Those are common areas where you might see the bald eagles. Brad, do you want to add anything? Yeah, um, there's, people ask, a common question people ask is, well, what's the best time to see the eagles here? Um, the biggest, uh, the biggest consistency about the bald eagle is their inconsistencies. Um, there are, um, it, more often uh, than not, uh, the eagles like to, to, what they call, roost at the end of the day. So a lot of times here around 3 o'clock to 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, if the eagles have been down on the Delaware or farther out onto the reservoir here, and they, they're going to call it a day, they, there's usually quite a bit of activity with eagles flying right over the blind, or as Paul had said, on, over the ridges on the side, and they'll head to the back over here where it's uh, peaceful and it's a restricted area so they won't be disturbed so they can roost for the night there. And then before it gets light in the morning, they're back up and out. So uh, it is, that's one of those reasons that um, you're better off to be either in the blind or in your car, because if you're out and about, uh, the eagles will see you and you won't get as many good looks at them because they won't normally fly over if people are out. They have very good eyesight. So um, yeah, it's just a, uh, uh, you know, it's just a, it, there are good days and there are bad days. Uh, there's no guarantees. But uh, again, there we have we have had as many as uh, forty some sightings on a on a Sunday. Uh, you know, not all at the same time, but uh, you know, this is this is a hot spot. So, uh, and we've been come we've been here for years, uh, and it's getting better year after year. And the uh, people, uh, by through the education that we help provide to the, the viewers, um, the number of people that have. Uh, adapted the eagle etiquette has increased from year to year which is good we don't have as many people that are uh, you know breaking the breaking the rules of uh, eagle etiquette so i think it's about it then right what i like to do when i get here is take your binoculars and look at the different trees uh, brad's going to talk about the different eight uh, ages it's there have been times when you might have six or seven eagles on one tree and some of them can be mature and some of them can be immature. So always when you come in, carefully look at the trees, go up and down because you never know what you're going to find. The same with on the trees on the other side. That's a common area where they like to sit and look at the water. So take and a good fish, look. And fish. And fish. One thing that I like to tell people is you have to be patient. You know, these are wild animals. They're not on a schedule. Many times Brad and I have said, well, okay, let's go home. And as soon as we say it, ten eagles fly over. Yes. So you, have, you never know what's going to happen. Just be patient and I'm sure you'll see something. Yeah, we get people that will come in here for five minutes. Oh, did you see anything? Uh, no, they look around. They're here for five minutes, and then they say, all right, well, and they leave. So they get in their car and they leave. You, you need to spend a little bit more time than five minutes. And the easiest way to spot a bald eagle is to let somebody else do it for you. And a lot of time, if you come into the blind, um, if there's, there's spotting scopes or other people in here with spotting scopes and binoculars, they'll most likely tell you, okay, there's three eagles in a tree over here, there's four eagles in the back over here. And, um, you know, that's the easiest way. Uh, but that's, uh, when we can talk about the, um, the age of the eagles. Um, the bald eagle doesn't get the white head and tail feathers until they're about five years old. And that's when they're, uh, that's when they're able to uh, 
uh, lay fertile eggs lay, or lay eggs and have them fertilized. Um, so that, um, there's different stages. Uh, the uh, the eagle when they're first when they're first hatched, they'll grow. They grow in about 12 weeks. They'll be a little bit larger than the parents. Uh, the males are smaller than the females, and uh, there's different stages as they molt their feathers out from year to year. So gradually, um, they're very dark and they don't have a dark they have a dark beak. But then as they get older, uh, as they get closer to being a full adult, the beaks turn yellow uh, and they'll get more of their white feathers in their head and their tails and stuff, otherwise they're models underneath. So uh, some of the other stuff that we've seen here, um, we've seen we've had golden eagles, uh, not, not often, but golden eagles. And we put feed out, there's feed out in the feed, uh, seed out in the feeders. And uh, when the big guys aren't around, there's plenty of little stuff around. There's, uh, like now today, there's quite a few uh, red and white nut hatches. Uh, red and white nut, yeah, red and white breasted nut hatches. Uh, there's been some blue jays. There was a uh, downy woodpecker. Uh, there was some black ducks out on the water. Uh, we've also had uh, otters. We've had otters out on the water. Uh, we've had a fox walking across the ice. And, uh, you know, there's always something here to do. Uh, so if you're... Uh, if dress you're, warmly. Yeah, dress warmly, dress in layers. And, uh, you know, and you can always go back into your car and warm up and then come back in. So, uh, you know, and again, we'll, uh, Paul and I are still going to be volunteering, although it's not in an official capacity. Uh, but we'll be here most of you know weekends and stuff like that so uh, come on out and stop in and see us and uh, we'll try and make it a, a good experience for you okay 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 one other uh, spot that's not far from here is uh, plank road and it's a uh, it's a continuation of the Mongop Reservoir, which is the middle reservoir. There's Swinging Bridge Reservoir behind us. This is the Mongop Falls Reservoir, and then there's the Rio Reservoir, which eventually empties off into the Delaware River. But if you go a little over a mile in, uh, I'm not sure, north, south, east, when you come out of the blind, you make a right. <laughs> and you just take the road up, and it's about a mile, a little, maybe a little over a mile. It's the first road where you can actually make a right, and it's called Old Plank Road. And if you make a right there and go down uh, a couple of miles, there'll be a, uh, uh, a power gener a power station generating electricity. And just past that, the road will get very close to the water. And it's a, uh, it's a, it runs hot and cold. Some days there's plenty of eagles there, and some days you couldn't find one if you had to. But um, it is a spot where it is, you get a very good look at them. But you also need to remember at that spot, you do not get out of your car because you're that close to the water and you could be that close to the eagles. Um, and if you take that all the way down, that'll take you back out onto Route 42, which if you make a left, you go to Monticello and you make a right, it goes down to Route 97 toward Port Jervis. So, Plank Road is a, again, there's a, it's hot and cold. We've seen other things along there too. We've seen porcupines uh, in the trees, uh, a couple different types of hawks, red shoulders hawks, uh, red tail hawks, and uh, fox, fox uh, wild turkeys, deer. So uh, it's just something else that adds to the experience of being up here, you know, in the, in the middle of winter. So.